uh, it all started in uh, a little flat above a chemist, as you quite rightly pointed out. Um, so I had a huge break, as everyone knows, and probably everyone does have, and uh, came back to Warhammer. Started putting videos on YouTube and, uh, and, and yeah, like I basically found out about commission painting through that and, uh, and then decided that I wanted to, 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 to start something, um, working in recruitment for many years as I had did, I think it was 11 or so years uh, off and on around music and stuff. Um, I just didn't see a professional side to it that I was used to so much in my, in my day to day job. Uh, and I wanted to kind of like create a very professional run business that delivered really high end commission painting as well. So that was kind of like my sort of like ethos of starting it. I think at first it was always supposed to be a side thing, but because of just how I was in music with bands and like running the band and managing the band and all that kind of stuff. And, and like, I did want it to grow into something bigger. And I suppose there were, uh, that, it would have been a dream back then for it to be where it is today or, you know, even half of where it is today, it would have been a dream back then. Um, but I suppose there was a little bit of, I do want it to get to that point in, in, in the, in the future. I was doing very well in recruitment. I worked really, really hard in recruitment as I do with anything that I've ever done. And, um, and I was due an end of year bonus that was supposed to be helping. Well, it, my, my mortgage was based off of that end of year bonus. I knew what I was what doing every month. And for anyone who doesn't know recruitment industry, you're targeted every single month on a certain amount of money to bring in. And for, I think it was nine or nine or eight of the months of that year, I'd hit my target for every month. So I knew even at that point, what I should be theoretically getting at the end of the year for my bonus to then basically be able to, uh, pr prove to my mortgage provider at the time that I could get, uh, get the, get the house I was trying to get. And, um, and for some unknown reason, the the owners of that business then changed the whole entire commission structure. So what I actually equated to is that my my bonus that I was supposed to be getting would have been like a third of what I was due. Uh, and obviously, look, I lost my mortgage as a result of that. Um, so it, I've always tried to be as fair as possible with anyone I work with or with people that work for the company or whatever. And and like uh, that for me was just like a, a red line that I wasn't happy to to continue having crossed so i just quit on the spot uh i didn't take much holiday anyway so i had 30 days or so holiday and i think i worked it out that i had enough holiday and, and and yeah i just i knew how much siege was doing around this 60 hour working week in recruitment and i just thought right well you know what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna give that finish that and then do recruit uh do do obviously siege full time and that, that's kind of where the jump happened and it really happened like it's kind of like maybe you think about two I've been, it's difficult to factually remember just because it's been so long now, but I think it was around about two or three, maybe three or four years into Siege is when I I, I made the jump. I think the next biggest kind of thing was like, you know, getting out of the, the uh, I moved from the flat above the chemist, which is where the first couple of years of Siege was. The um, famous, the famous, the famous flat above the chemist. Um, and then I moved into a flat around the corner, which was a bit bigger. And then my, essentially my whole entire front room became kind of like the, storeroom essentially so my living room was literally a storeroom for quite some time um uh, and then about three to four years in i think only i was still in that flat that was that was around the corner from the other first flat but then uh, three or four years in I, I, my front room was i i honestly it was horrendous there was like just boxes and models and miniatures everywhere and like a desk here. God, imagine paint. that. It was, it was, yeah. It was <laughs> so yeah. different now. Yeah. Now you're in an office with yeah. uh, boxes and models and miniatures everywhere. Yeah. Um, and then we, and then we, and then I first, I got the first room at the office and the building that we're in now, uh, on the first, on the, on the top floor. And, uh, and yeah, that was really helpful for me because like it actually gave me the opportunity to, I say, well, it didn't because I still did work when I was at home, but it gave me an opportunity to separate work from, Home, home to an extent because i'd still be doing emails at home as well as like i'd go, i'd walk home from 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 i'd walk home from the office it took me like five ten minutes to get back to my flat and by the time i walked home someone would have replied and i'd have my laptop on me and i'm like oh, i'll just do that now you know like so it, it didn't really ever stop like it never really stopped like you know um and yeah and then and then yeah with the the office i obviously had that first room everything was in there um i don't remember if i had the other room when you joined i don't know if i did or not yeah i mean we'll we'll I can't remember you that. Did, you you had just you had just got the second room when right, I okay, when I yeah. So yeah, so then the so then for about two years or so, it was one room in the in the office building that we're in now, and me working from home 
from as well. So I was doing like a, I was stopping going work, in during the going day, in yeah. during the day, coming home, cooking and eating dinner, and then my own, and then and then just working in the evening as well. So you went from having a side hustle to a, a different job. Yeah. So then you 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 still treated it like a side hustle when it was a real job. Yeah. It's like a side <laughs> hustle yeah. for your company. Yeah, yeah. yeah basically, you yeah. you were side yeah. hustling the same job that you were working throughout the day yeah i think what I, i'm like i think personally I, I am very stubborn and very relentless and and you know and and i will i won't give up like that's one of the things like i just i i, I yeah i've always when i have clear vision on where where how i want it to go or things I, I always try and always try and achieve that i think i think that's really important when it comes to when it comes to business in general like um you know and if you want to you, you know things just don't happen by clicking your fingers you know you do have to put the graft in you do have to put the work in and i think um i think sometimes that's often forgotten how much actually goes into doing stuff like there's that famous iceberg picture where you see the top bit which is like the bit that everybody looks up to and whatever mm. and beneath that you see all this all this other stuff that's led to that bit above the way i think that's a know. commonality with a lot of things that people see as like a, an enjoyable job which obviously it is we yeah. all love this thing but yeah. everything has everything still work at the end of the day like wh whatever you love in your life if you make that your passion and your business yeah there's always going to be the work side of that because yeah, i think yeah. a lot of people outside looking in will be like oh you just paint toy soldiers all day yeah yeah but it's not that simple no it's not it really isn't and, and i said like at that point like sort of like five six years in like i've i I was slowly coming off of the tools, which for anyone who knows me well enough knows that that's still very hard for me to do because I actually do enjoy the day to day. I like, I want to be involved in everything and I do want to genuinely do it just to help not to be like this crazy sort of like oppressive kind of like, are you doing it right? Like I just, I, I genuinely, I love every aspect of the business so much that, you know, uh, and because I've done everything in the business, maybe not to where it's at now as in like the stuff that maybe you do Georgia media or that you do in ops now, Joe, but like the stuff that I, I obviously done in the early days that I don't do now, but it has changed so much, but it's like, it's like, I still want to have an inherent understanding of how it's done so that I'm not that owner of a business that's like, doesn't understand what goes on. I think that's really important. Well, I think especially with the painting side of it, you might not be painting commissions, uh, no. people anymore, but you do kind of, uh, we do fight every time that you want to do a, a preview model because you, you obviously do really still want to, it's hard. It's um, hard. Juggle. Every time we get like a Games Workshop preview model or something like that, yeah. it, you you really still want to contribute to the the painting side of the business. So yeah. I think you are. It's nice that you're still, even though you you're obviously way too busy to be doing commissions and actually painting the commissions anymore. Yeah, yeah. But it is nice that you still have this like. Every now and then, there is something to do with painting that you can do for the well, company. It's yeah. proof that you kind of never burnt yourself out in it, right? Because like yeah. even doing it after ten years, you still want to be on the brush. I do, yeah, yeah. I, I genuinely do because I find painting way more stress stress relieving than, than uh, the, the day to day. Believe it or not, well, it's obvious the day to day is obviously way more stressful than the, the, the natural painting sometimes like, of the projects like that. Like you, even if it's a model that maybe I don't really like that much, I still think just getting the chance to zone out and paint the model would would be sometimes like something that is a little bit less stressful for me than maybe dealing with a certain situation or having to try and sort a certain thing or do a certain thing, you know? Um, but, but at the same time, like, yeah, I do. I never really got burnt out from it because I, I do, I do massively enjoy what we do as a company. And I, I'm not saying that maybe certain aspects of the, there was always gonna be stuff that's like not as fun as other stuff. That's just inherent with any role or any, any job, but, but it is something that, I still massively enjoy all aspects of the company. Like, you know, if, if, uh, maybe like Paul and packing is off, I'm, I don't mind going and packing a model and making sure it's perfectly packed so that it goes out and it doesn't get damaged and all that stuff. Um, you know, um, and all that kind of stuff. I still enjoy doing those things, but I know that that's not where I'm best placed now and what, what I should be doing, if that makes sense. Like, you know, it's, it's very, it's believe it or not, that's one of the hardest things is take it's taking your hand off, off of stuff is, is, is the hardest thing when you spent so long getting it to that point.